This week we're going to talk about your brain not working. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's Amin here with Sarah Masters, developing the Muslim mindset for success. This week I want to talk about a book that I read recently called The Shallows. The Shallows, it's all about. I think it's the the subtitle is um, how the internet is changing how our brains work or something like that. It's a book. I think it's written by a neuroscientist, so somebody who is involved in the study of of the brain and like the actual physical brain, the physiology of the brain, the neuro neurons and how they uh, connect to form. Uh, synapses, synapses, something like that, and all the neurons in the brain. Okay, and it was a fascinating read. Let me just say that first. It was a little bit heavy the first half of it to get through some of the uh, scientific, like medical almost stuff, but it was still very enlightening. Uh, one thing I want to share with you is uh, the author was going through talking about how these different key tools that humans have had and developed throughout time have changed everything okay such as books like writing being able to write and, and write books and be able to read and how that just changed everything imagine before books and before the average person could could read you were just limited to what people around you could tell you and what you could remember like can you imagine how how crazy that would be like not everybody were, I'm sure, not everyone was like the Arabs where they, they were very used to memorizing a lot of different things. Uh, can you just imagine this? It's crazy how the, once reading, writing became a thing, once books, once paper, all of these things became widespread, it changed humans forever, okay? So that was one thing. The other thing was the ability to measure time. Think, think about that, measuring time, whether it's with a clock or with a sundial, before this happened, you would have way less concept of what's going on, how much time is going past. It's just crazy. So that little chapter about these different things that we've had um, was was very you know eye opening. That was just generally interesting, not not super super on topic. Now the the second half of the book it goes into how yes how using the internet how uh, reading articles online how just looking at a screen compared to a piece of paper how these things physically change your brain and something that i kind of have tried to adopt is i try because i'm a very very visual person maybe this will still work for you um because i'm a visual person i try to visualize the negative effects of little things so what is a little thing something like drinking coke right some coke like half a glass of coke when I drink that, I actually visualize my blood sugar now is going through the roof. I imagine a graph in my head of it just going, wow, like so, so high in such a short amount of time. And I realize, wow, that's very extreme. Wow, that's not good. And at least, although it tastes nice at the time, or kind of nice, although it's sweet at the time, I have a little bit of that negative feeling that, wow, I can visualize this is doing something bad to me. Similarly, when I'm on my laptop, for example, working and I get a notification, my phone's there next to me and I'm like this, like switching between the two, I visualize that that's messing up the actual neurons in my brain, okay? So uh, something similar I try to apply because it is, and it turns out it is damaging our brains. So for example, the whole habit that many of us in, are uh, we search something on Google, we click a, a link and we get an article, let's say, how often do we go and read every single uh, word of that article? Very rarely. And um, it's because we, we're searching for, we just want the relevant stuff, we want quick, right? Um, and that style of researching or looking for something, it's actually physically changed our brains to make it harder for us to sit and concentrate and digest a uh, uh, long piece of information. I mean, it's not really long, like just an article, like a thousand words. It's made it hard for us. It's not because you're just bad at concentrating naturally. It's because you've trained your brain to seek these kind of things, these very quick bits of information. And so it mentions, Yanni, that's a skill in a way, in being able to skim stuff, being able to extract the key information quickly. But when you develop that skill too much, you lose the other skill, which is the ability to look and deeply analyze and think and ponder and extract our original ideas. And this is one of the craziest uh, ideas that came out of the book. And apparently it's proven that 
using the internet way too much like what we do you know who knows how long we use it a day you know minimum two hours a day and that kind of skimming activity and all the activity which is normal for someone using the internet what that does it actually this is crazy it stops your ability for generating original thoughts so let that sink in it basically makes you a follower it makes you more of a follower by being like that and so there are a lot of these uh, conclusions that are in the book that is all based on science apparently neuroscience um, and it's very shocking actually the path that we're all going down because we're all using it so much and so what did I get out of it in terms of practical stuff well I realized I want to definitely want to have a regular reading habit so for example I want to make sure I'm reading like at least 20 minutes per day every single day just to keep that exercise of being able to focus on one thing and just read and no distractions no notifications and just be able to read and focus and it's honestly it's hard sometimes but I want to get in a habit I want to have that something that I'm able to do have the ability to do that and also the fact that I'm reading a book it's much deeper than a video or an article and so it allows me to think and ponder more and take in deeper information that you wouldn't be able to someone wouldn't be able to squeeze all this stuff into uh, just an article so there's so much you get out of reading book the other thing that I want to do which I was already doing but it's emphasize it more is get rid of all notifications pretty much so on my phone the only notifications I have is obviously text messages which I rarely get okay so that's not even an issue for me I never get text messages but the, the notifications are on phone calls is on and whatsapp is on but not for groups so whatsapp will be on but um, only for individuals messaging me and um, uh, and other than that all notifications are turned off so one thing that was key was I turned notifications for email off that was very good so that's been gone for a while now and I see a lot of benefits and also even though I've got whatsapp notifications on when I'm working my phone is not with me I put it in another room or I put it in do not disturb mode and I just don't get distracted by it uh, because again I, I kind of physically feel that pain of I'm trying to focus and then boom like I'm, I'm looking and a notification this and, and switching that switching I know it's killing my brain so think of your brain as something that needs training like there are neurons in your brain that develop further and they get thicker and thicker as you do an activity so the more you're doing a bad activity the more you're training your brain to more easily do that and it even comes down to like willpower and your ability to resist temptations it comes down to a lot of it comes down to the physical nature of the, your brain what you've developed what you've trained your brain to do and so you got to be very careful of habits very careful of habits so that's another thing I did in terms of notifications and other than that it's like just be wary and just don't use my laptop by default <clears throat> by default like go on my laptop because of a reason not just for just because that just why not like oh there's so much to see on the internet try and avoid that I don't I don't think I've really done much progress in that area yet but yeah I would recommend the book I think it's one of these key things that we're all gonna be battling for the rest of our lives and so it's good to know about it to have a basic foundation and a, one thing that other reason yeah, I need to read it is for your kids like you gotta your kids are going to be a blank canvas and so do your kids need to have all the bad uh, habits that you have do you have to train your kids to have all the concentration problems and stuff that you have no so how will you develop something a healthy balance where they can use the internet but they're not wrecking their brains um, how will you think about that unless you've not read a unless you've read a book like this so that's another reason to read the book so I would read the book I would give the book you know, might be 7.5 out of 10. Um, it's it's a it's a good topic. It was dealt with well. Yes, there was like medical kind of neuroscience stuff in it, which was quite heavy for me. But sometimes, you know, that's just necessary, and and that's fine. I mean, that's why I'm deducting a few points. Um, it was very interesting. Uh, there were a lot of like um, a lot of research cited, a lot of examples that helped you understand it, and so I give it 7.5. For me, that's solid because. If I think of the best books ever in the world getting 10 out of 10, 
7.5 is still good, you know, so that's what I would give it. Uh, it's called The Shallows. I don't remember the author's name, unfortunately. But if you search The Shallows and then, like, internet, you should be able to find it. So, yeah, it was a good book. Um, just really, really take care of your brain. Uh, your brain will be trained based on what you do regularly. It will get trained. And so we want to try. It's very hard, honestly, very hard to avoid these things which we're doing so excessively. Uh, we have we have so little diversity in our uh, daily activity. I mean, what do I do in, in a day? Um, I pray, I eat, I uh, read a little bit, I drive a little bit, but mostly I'm just sitting on my laptop. And so this, when it comes to you physically doing things differently, there's so little diversity. And so that's extreme, isn't it? Like spending eight hours of your day on a laptop, like that's extreme. And so it's gonna have extreme effects on your brain. And so like, how do we deal with this? who knows but I just was a bit scared of the the fact that it stops you thinking having original thoughts making you more of a follower not be able to think deeply I mean for me this just seems like a recipe for the gel to come and then say hey follow me kids and you won't be able to think otherwise you know and you see it a lot to be honest when I look at like America and the divisive politics they have for me, it's just so much following going on, so little balanced original thought. And I feel like, yeah, that's because Americans, more than a lot of people, they're just battered with entertainment and fast moving shots. And uh, whether it's on TV or internet, like it's crazy for them. So they're kind of the guinea pigs, uh, but we're still there with the guinea pigs. I mean, we've been using this stuff before we even knew what it was gonna do to us. So yeah, subhanAllah. Good book, I would recommend it. This has been Amin with Sarah Masters. Salam alaikum wa rahmatullah.